Howdy folks, big ol' welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be here with this 2014 Freightliner Cascadia with a DD-15 motor. So, statistically speaking, there's about 37 billion of these things on the roads today. I'm kidding, I'm just making that up. Anyways, there are a lot of these trucks out there. And if you're an owner-operator, or you just own the trucks like me, or if you're a technician looking to get into it, this video is for you because we're going to be teaching you how to do a PM on one of these bad boys. So that includes uh, an oil change, oil filter replacement, the fuel filter replacement, there's two of them, and also the water, fuel water separator. So, uh, without talking your ear off anymore, let's go and see what we need to do this. Alright guys, in terms of tools for this, you don't really need too much. You are going to need a drip pan, a uh, funnel to put the oil back in. I got some buckets from Home Depot. You're going to need three of them to put the old oil in. It's just the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. Then you're also going to need one of these here. Uh, special wrenches. Goes around the fuel water separator. You can find them at most truck stores. I found mine in a Freightliner freight dealership. But it takes that cap off, as well as this ring, so that you can pull this, this filter out. Um, but otherwise, what you need is a 36 millimeter socket. What I found works the best. So that guy up on top of the fuel filters as well as the oil filter. And if you're going to do the coolant filter as well, it fits for that as well. But we're not doing that today. Just the stuff I said earlier. And the other tools you'll need are breaker bar and a half inch wrench. But uh, if you got enough money in your budget, you got to get yourself some blue towels and some gloves. So let's get on into it. All right, folks, so step one, we're going to be getting in here and draining our oil. And as you can see, I have what's called an easy drain valve on there. It's got a little lever that you just push to the side and it just starts to flow right out into your drip pan. Otherwise, if you don't have this, your oil pan is just going to have a half inch plug in it. So you just need like a half inch wrench, stick it in there and unscrew it. So let's, let's get to uh, time lapsing all the oil coming out. Well, I'm an idiot. I lost my bigger drip pan, so we're going to go with this little tiny one, and we're going to just transfer it from there into this bucket about 500 times. So let's, uh, let's check it out. Alright guys, I believe we drained enough out of there that we can just leave a bucket, let it drip for a while, while we start doing our other stuff. We have our expended oil there, so now we're going to go over to the other side, replace the oil filter, fuel filters, and the water, fuel water separator. Alright, so the first thing we're going to change over here is going to be this fuel filter, or sorry, this oil filter right here takes that 36 millimeter socket, so we're going to grab our socket and our wrench, pull that thing off. Be careful not to crack it because it is tough. Now that she's loose, we're going to take our drip, drip pan here and pull it out into that so we don't make too much of a mess. This thing should just separate. If I remember correctly. <laughs> Nice. And we're back. 
Sorry we had a little bit of a splash down there with the oil filter. But we're going to clean out the inside of this thing. One part I forgot to get. I'm going to need a, a pick to get this oil filter off. So this O-ring off. Alright, so now that we got this all cleaned up on the inside, we're going to pull that O-ring off. Nice and easy. Everything gets you dirty doing this job, I swear. And we're going to pull this new filter out. And you're going to take this, like, inserted part up here on the top. Not that like that on the bottom. I take it like that and then just clip that up into the housing. I could have first put this O-ring on. Whatever. I do what I want. Now that's all back on there, I'm going to take this and put it back in its home. Just for your reference, the part number on this oil filter for this engine is right there. Now we're going to take this filter insert, put it right back in there. It looks pretty clean already in there. And there you have it. Spinner back in. And it says to tighten it down to that spec. I usually just go slightly past enough. You know, you've been doing it long enough. You know, you know. There you have it. Tighten down just enough where it's like stopped and started to get a little bit resilient. So just push a little bit past that, but you push these things too far, they'll crack. Alrighty guys, next on our list, we did the oil drain and the oil filter. Now we're gonna do these here fuel filters. And then afterwards we're gonna do the uh, fuel water separator. But I personally wanna do these first so that there's an air pocket here that way, when I go to drain the fuel water separator down there, um, a bunch of fuel is not going to come out afterwards. So let's get these lids off here, caps, whatever you want to call them. Oh man, they're on there tight. I'm going to get the breaker bar for this one because I don't want to break it all. All right, little guy, let's hope that you come loose. Nice and gentle, like. Move this nice and quick over to our drip pan. So we got the big one out. Let's get this little guy out of here. All 
anyway, so we got those little filter cartridges out. We're going to check in there. Everything looks good. Now, trying to pull the little filters out of their caps again. The uh, fuel filter kit is right here. Let's get that opened up and put these filters into their new home. I'm taking the easy route, so we're going to start with this little guy first. I don't think there's really any easy way to get these things out of these freaking caps. Just a ton of elbow grease. Clean this cap all up. Also, oh. also, we gotta pull an O-ring out of this. Put another one on there. Take our new filter. Alright, this one doesn't actually clip in, it just sits on there. Now we're going to do the one that's a pain in the butt to get out. I've done these a couple times and they never want to come out. All right, so we got the big filter, the big fill filter out of there. That one's always a pain in the butt to get out. I don't really know what kind of good way to recommend to get that guy out of there, but it's always kind of sketchy. So now we're going to pull this O-ring out of this one. Drop that there. Put our new O-ring on. Wheat. Then we're going to put our new filter right back in. Man, it's getting hot out here. All right. So take notice of this thing. When you go to put this filter back in there, you got to make sure that this goes into a little divot in that housing. I'll show you that. But if it's not in that housing, you're going to have some problems. So make sure you put that back in its housing. All right, guys, so when we put this fuel filter in, there's a hole over here on the left side. That's where that little needle on the bottom of this thing is going to go into. So you got to make sure you line that correctly. Next up, we're going to be taking out this fuel water separator. So this is a nice old mason jar and an old oil container that comes in handy. So we're going to turn this valve and leak out the juices inside here. So... Here we go. All right, so now that the fun part of draining that's over, we've got to get our special wrench here that we showed you. We're going to start taking everything apart. So that little notch right there undoes this top cap. Probably should have unscrewed that first so it would have flowed out a little better, but whatever. Now we're going to take this big old wrench around this ring. And trust me, it's definitely worth the investment because you're not going to open these with your hands. I'm just going to nice slowly start to twist that off. Careful because there's a spring up here that holds that that filter down. Oh, we're just gonna pull that out, set it down, and now we can pull out this filter. The 
Looks like we've got some more uh, some more juice to leak out so we can clean out that bowl. Now that we got all that juice emptied out, we're going to uh, take some rags, clean out the inside of this. Got some stuff sitting in it we don't want. Going back into the truck. Next up, we're going to take this filter out of the box. There's the part number for your reference. I'm going to put it over here into the fuel water separator. Just slides right in on top. Then basically you got two O-rings. Hey, what's going on? Pull this guy out. Pop that one in a little while. And the other O-ring hanging out right here. All right, so we ended up cleaning off the O-ring area, and then we also uh, rolled the O-ring up a little bit. It's hard to explain, but like when you roll it over onto the lip, it like wants to roll back off. So if you like tuck it the opposite direction, I won't want to roll it off then. So that's what we did. Now she's staying. We're gonna tighten her back up. And at this point, we're gonna start putting everything back together. Again. I'm just going to tighten it to where it's just snug enough. Put it right there. You don't want to kill it. All this stuff's plastic and it could break. Alright, so that separator's back in. Nice and tight. Next thing we're going to do, put this little guy back in the fuel filter spot. Alright, next we're going to take this little filter. Put that back in the fuel filter housing spot. We took some of this grease that came with the filter and just grease up the rim here. So it's not as hard to come out next time. And again, I'm just going to tighten it up to where it's snug and we'll leave it at that. snugs up pretty quick then you know you don't need to go any further all right next we're moving on to the big fuel filter don't forget this nipple we'll go basically down on the right side of the housing over there showed you that earlier so this is actually kind of a pain in the butt but we'll get it so get this guy set in there and tighten her on All right, so the filter's back in. Just gonna tighten her down now as well. Nice and snug. So we got the fuel water separator and oil filter in over there, and both fuel filters. So next, we're gonna go close up our oil pan. We're gonna put some oil in, and then we've got to prime the engine back up because we just lost our prime. And then we're going to start up and see if she runs good. Alrighty, folks. Next up, we got refilling the oil. So, this engine takes 47 quarts of oil. So, we got three five gallon buckets over there. Each of those is 20 quarts. So, we need two buckets to make 40 quarts and then an extra seven quarts. So, let's start cracking them in. All right, guys, so we put 47 quarts of oil in, and now we just got to wipe everything down. I'm going to show you how to prime this engine, and we're going to start it up and make sure everything's good. All right, everything's been wiped down. 
Now we're going to prime the fuel system because we created an air bubble. So, there's a plunger right here next to these two uh, fuel filters. You got to unscrew it. That's going to pop up any day now. There we go. Now you just got to start pumping until you start feeling a little resistance like fuel is being pumped in there. So we'll time lapse it. Here we go. All right, so we gave it a million two pumps. Let's go ahead and try to start it up and see if she'll move for us. Nothing yet, so we gotta keep priming, see if we can get her to suck some fuel up. Alrighty folks, finally after priming it about 2,000 times, we got it started, so we're gonna let it run for a little bit, make sure everything's all right. Well folks, there you have it. So far, so good, it's running good. No leaks, no check engine lights. Everything's cleaned up, so. I hope you found that helpful. If you haven't already, go back, take a screenshot of what you need to do this and the parts that you're going to need to get done as well. So with that being said, I hope you guys take care. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys later.